Hey everybody, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Sam. I am the superhero. I am a psychic medium and that's what makes me a superhero. So go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button because we love superheroes over here. Today I'm talking about a karmic vagina filled with poison. A karmic relationship is defined as a relationship that's filled with all-consuming passion but is extremely difficult to maintain. These relationships aren't meant to last but they're learning experiences for those who have them. So let's get into and explore the case of the karmic vagina filled with poison. An unnamed woman was fed up with her husband refusing to divorce her, so she took drastic action to free herself from their marriage once and for all, but it almost killed her. The Brazilian's murderous plot was one of cunning cunnilings, as it was dubbed by the local media in her native country. In 2013, her scheme sent shockwaves around the world. Brazil's TVI24 reported that the woman was tired of asking her 43-year-old husband for a divorce, and she tried a new tactic. She, he claimed that she tried to lure him into the bed to perform oral sex on her, but a strange smell coming from her J stopped him in his tracks. He wasn't with it. The dutiful husband was so worried that he uh, forced her to go to the hospital near their home in the city of Sao de Jose, Rio Preto. Once there, tests revealed that she had doused her genital area and filled her vajayjay with enough of the unnamed toxin to kill not only him, but herself as well. She only confessed to what she had been planning when the test results came back and understandably her husband was livid. However, his insistence that she got checked out actually saved her life, but there was no sympathy for her. He claimed he planned to sue her for attempted murder. Local police reportedly ordered further investigation due to the nature of the case. Now, I found no information as to what happened when all was said and done here, but I did see several other reports of the husband suing his wife for attempted murder. And... Now that that crazy story is over, now for my spiritual perspective. This case, outside of it being karmic, because it is most definitely a karmic case, uh, it's giving me real unrequited love vibes, okay? Unrequited love is defined as uh, one-sided love, which love, a one-sided love, which love that is not openly recipro reciprocated or returned in kind, okay? To this definition, I'll also add that unrequited love can also mean that there is not enough attraction to keep the relationship going. That attraction can be physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional as well. So to sum it up, unrequited love means that um, that person really just isn't feeling you all like that. And this type of thing can be confusing, especially since things usually start out on a high, and then as time goes on, that high usually wanes. And when it does, we tend to notice the little things about a person that have already been a part of their makeup, right? So the little things like habits that we consider undesirable and so forth. In this case, it sounds like the wife checked out of this relationship long before the husband realized what was going on. Although I'm sure there were signs, which is exactly what so many of us ignore when we're in love, right? So those big red flags that beg us to abort the mission and instead of that, we move full speed ahead. Now, I no longer give psychic readings, ladies and gentlemen, but when I did, the vast majority of the time that a client thought that their spouse was cheating, they actually were. And my point in saying that is we usually feel an energetic on an energetic level when something is not working out, something is amiss, something is not right. The problem is that we don't want to accept what is, right? So we'll hear our intuition screaming at us and we'll turn around and ignore it. Other people can tell us and we'll say, you got to be wrong. You saw the wrong thing. You heard the wrong thing. Instead of just accepting what is. Okay. So yeah, we'll deny within ourselves. And if someone outside of ourselves mention it, um, we'll take our anger out on them. A lot of the times, too often, if you ask me. So now imagine, if you will, a long line of people waiting for a bus. And you can see the bus far off in the distance, right? You can see it slowly stopping at every stop on its way down the road. And every time the bus stops at the next stop, someone gets, uh, someone gets on the bus and someone gets off of the bus. Now, imagine that you are the bus. That's exactly how spouses are 
that are lined up on our journey, waiting for their turn to enter your life. And they exit. As we all have an expiration date, or shall I say, we come to the end of a contract with each other. So, of course, people are going to exit. The vast majority of the time, there is someone else waiting next in line. But the bus will only get to the next stop when it's ready to. Like when it has gas in it, right? Which can be the motivation needed to move on. When it has its oil, which could be doing some inner work and being able to release the past. When it has its antifreeze, when it can no, when when uh, my tongue tied is all over the place today. Forgive me, you guys. Which could be no longer being angry and healing from the hurt of the past, and when it has its will alignment, which could be ready to get back out there. So if you reach a stop on your journey and it's time to make a drop off, as hard as it may be, open the doors of that bus and wish them well. Because the passenger up the street is waiting on their ride. Even if you've been single for 20 or 30 years, hear me on this. That bus may have nicks or dents in it, but that bus ain't broke. Okay, everybody, that's all I have for you for today. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. My contact information is down below in the description box. And until next time, remember, anybody can be a superhero, even you.